Yeah, this is a great example. This is a good question. Charles, what are your thoughts on meme coins like Doge and Shiba being in the top 10? So all you guys running around who are obsessed with price, obsessed with price, obsessed with burn ADA, why is the price falling? Why is this doing? You know, I've been in this space for so long. I've watched everything. When Bitcoin was under a dollar, we traded it on spreadsheets and we used for a PayPal account to like, it was violation of the end user license agreement. You know, everybody did it in the cryptocurrency space. You used to, I think you used PayPal to send money to Mount Cox. Okay. It was just like nobody cared because it was a fun little thing. It was like buying, you know, a Jordan's uh, stone off of, Dia, you know, a Diablo 2 account or something like that. That was the same category it was in. Uh, and then it went all the way up to $30. Wow. And it fell down to $4. Then it went from $4 to $250 and $250 down to $80. Then eighty up to twelve hundred dollars, one thousand two hundred. Then one thousand two hundred all the way down to two fifty. It stagnated there for a while. Then it went all the way up to twenty thousand. Then it collapsed all the way down to four thousand. Then four thousand to sixty four thousand. And then you know collapsed to the more. And then it went back up. The markets are crazy, and they value things in very crazy ways. And I don't understand it. I really don't. And I know for a fact any single person on the protocol development side who chases market appreciation through gimmicks and marketing and all these other things, uh, first they seldom accomplish it in the long term. And they sound a lot like the BitConnect guys. And second, the markets are very fickle. Take a way back machine snapshot, January 1st of coin market cap from the beginning of the website to today and look at the top 10 of who was in the top 10, who was in the top 10, who was in the top 10. And you see how much it changes. So they have their exits and their entrances and people flip each other all the time. The people who stay are the people who are committed to a mission and actually want to do something with the platform. They have real answers for what is the use and utility? Why is this thing here? What's the point of this stuff? So I'll give you a very good example of a very real business problem. Facebook recently announced that they're changing the name of the company from Facebook to Meta because they're obsessed with this thing called the Metaverse. So there's a book that was published in 2019. It's called The Spatial Web. And it talks, and there's a Spatial Web Foundation and all these other guys. And it talks a lot about the Spatial Web. Ah, oh, what the hell is the Spatial Web? Okay. Put your hats on. It's going to be a little bit of a journey. So in the beginning, we had PCs. And PCs ran programs, and programs connected databases. That's your model. Then suddenly, the internet comes around, and PCs begin getting networked together. And now you have servers, and you have websites, browsers, okay? And, you know, you have this notion of a, you know, a server database, okay? Then you move to mobile computing, and then mobile computing has apps, and then apps have the cloud. Yay, cloud. Okay, that's Web 2.0. And then Web 3.0, they said, what the hell is that? And so the original idea was this notion of a semantic web. So instead of just information, images, text, videos, pictures, you have contextual information. So uh, the canonical example is I uh, go into a website about uh, gardening and farming, and I see the word greenhouse. The website, the AI, is sophisticated enough to understand that greenhouse there is talking about a structure with glass that keeps the heat in and allows plants to grow and has constant humidity and so, or whatever the humidity is for the plants, as opposed to a website about painting homes and it mentions greenhouse and they're actually talking about a physical house that's green. Okay, so there's ambiguity unless you have context. The semantic web would understand the difference between these two things. The spatial web is this idea that you take that base layer, okay, and you pull it up, and now you have the internet of everything. People, places, things, locations, all those things together become liquid, and they get merged into the internet and be, become semantically aware. And so your interfaces change. You go from web browser or a mobile interface to augmented reality and virtual reality and mixed reality. Uh, your computing logic changes fundamentally. So you go from programs to web applications to mobile applications to smart contracts and AI and these types of things. 
and your data layer changes tremendously. You go from a database to a server to the cloud to all of those things plus blockchain, okay? So when you talk about that in its totality, the metaverse is probably going to be worth more than the physical world because there's more of them and the majority of human beings by 2050 will work in the digital world, not the physical world. And a lot of physical jobs are going to be automated and robots are going to live there and do those things. So we as humans are going to live in the digital virtual world and we're going to have all kinds of virtual world. Virtual real estate at some point will be worth as much as, if not more so, than physical real estate. It's an insane concept, but that's the case. So this is where you ask yourself, well, why do NFTs matter? Why does identity matter? Cryptographically secure identity and NFTs create scarcity and uniqueness and the access on off ramps for these things and creates identity for avatars inside the system. So Zuckerberg's got this. He's a very smart guy and he's got a giant Fortune 500 company behind him. He sees the future and he knows we're going to be living in Ready Player One and he knows that IOT is going to bathe everything. They even have paint that has sensors in it. So you paint a surface and then what you can do is put your phone down on it and it, the sensors get activated through near field communication. And then suddenly the state of the table is known, knowable. And with augmented reality, then it, you can see all kinds of things about the table and so forth. Like if you're at a restaurant, the menu will just automatically appear. If you're a waitress serving a restaurant with Apple Glass, the, their AR product that's coming out in a few years, you, you, the tables you haven't visited in a while will be red. The tables that you have visited will be green. And if somebody is uh, you know, visibly looking like they want to order or something, or they can just signal to you, like a little asterisk will appear or something, okay? This is the AR, VR world that we live in. You need a control layer to sort all that stuff out. And either it's totally centralized, controlled by a small group of people, and that's a super fucking dystopian black mirror world, or the spatial web is going to be open and free. And every time we rebuild the web, we have a chance to do that. When we went from Web 1.0 to Web 2.0 to now Web 3.0, we're moving in that direction. So when you ask yourself, okay, does Cardano have a shot of providing something interesting there? Oh, sure. We have DIDs with the Tala Prism. We have the native asset standard for metadata. And we sure as hell can build a spatial web protocol stack that can live as a side chain of Cardano. And once you have that, you could talk about basically being the platform that ensures the property rights the privacy rights and the movement of value for the entire virtual world, which will be worth more than the physical world, tens of trillions of dollars. To have those capabilities and a route to such a thing in a 5, 10, 15 year time horizon, if the community wants to do that, is an example of use and utility and vision. And seeing that Fortune Fiber companies are chasing that, and you can offer a decentralized version of that, is an example of the utility of blockchain. And why blockchain? Because the only other way to do it is to put somebody in charge, which means Mark Zuckerberg will basically own your digital avatar, your digital identity, and decide your property rights in the virtual world with no election and he's king for life. Blockchain is the only other way to do that. It's not optional, okay? And no government's gonna protect you in this respect, because even if it does, do you really want China or the United States of America or Germany being in total control forever of the virtual world. And maybe some international body will sort it out. How do they deal with global warming or any of these other existential transnational problems? Private standards of blockchain, trust the math, not the people. When I look at Doge and SHIB, where's the vision there? That's one problem that I've just articulated for you guys that when you really start thinking it through, looking at the spatial web and where that's going and how transformative that's going to be for you, and by 2050, the impact that's going to have on humanity, they offer no solutions or approaches to deal with that. Cardano has an ability to do that if we so choose as an ecosystem quickly. And it's just something that can be added into that protocol stack. So there's real value there. And that's just one dimension. Then there's the transformation of DeFi to RealFi. And real fi is like DeFi plus regulation, plus identity, plus metadata, uh, you know, plus certification, plus standards, these types of things, right? So that's a whole new category right there, real fi. 
And by the way, we're bringing tens of millions of people with MFI plays and identity plays and other things into the cryptocurrency space. And their on-ramp is going to be Cardano for that type of stuff. And why do they do it? Because do you guys know what people pay for loans here in Ethiopia? First, there's a 30% inflation rate. 30%. You think, oh, it's bad in America. 30% here. Banks lend out to good, creditable MFIs at 18% the average interest rates are at least 22, 24%. And the black market rates can go over 100% to 150%. In some of the high unemployment areas, 600% per annum. That's the reality they live today. Solving that one problem transforms the lives of 120 million people just here in the country I currently am in. And tomorrow I'm gonna to be in a new country and there's 100 million people there who need that too. Okay, solving that particular problem, having a solution stack. You need cash in, cash out. You need uh, integration with trusted hardware and ATMs. You need stable coins. You need DEXs to move value around. You need blockchain-based identity systems. You need uh, some sophisticated layer two privacy solutions to be able to route all these things through. You need marketplaces to form. They need to be liquid. They need to have browser-based interfaces. These types, it's a huge stack, the MFI stack. That's a product category. It takes years to pursue it. And it's a subcategory of RealFi, right? Lots of stuff there. <laughs> so real use and utility, if you have vision, whether it be metaverse vision or RealFi vision or governance as a service vision, whatever the hell it is, property rights, data rights, privacy rights, these types of things for millions to billions of people produce and preserve trillions of dollars of collective value. The point of these protocols is they're competing to provide a philosophy for the world for these things. And if we get there, we change the world. We make it a lot better. If we don't get there, by default, it goes to the fangs. Facebook owns it. Apple owns it. Google owns it. Netflix owns it. Spotify owns it. They all have their own control in their own little areas, and they do their own little things. And we just have to accept a small group of plutocrats and oligarchs basically run the world and get to decide what your world is. I don't see that vision when people buy Doge and ship because I don't see the conversation. In Cardano, I see the conversation. I see people talking about the future. How do we make the world a better place? How do we build applications? I see the same thing in the Ethereum space. With Doge, I see how do I make money? How do I get a 10X? How do I get a 100X? So do I think that's going to be around in 10 years? No, absolutely not. Because there's no, there's nothing there to keep it up and keep it permanent. It's the conversation, the belief, the applications, the use and utility, the entrance into these emerging markets that change everything. And if you can't do that, well, then meh. But that's one man's opinion. And I'm sure tomorrow we're going to get brutalized by uh, those two communities. <laughs>